I've, I've had a number of inquiries from people you know, over the last couple of months actually about hooking fish and not getting bites or their bait coming back without any indication that, that there's been fish there but the bait taken and bite indication is a really essential part of fishing I mean if, if you don't know what's happening out there you're not going to catch those fish if you've seen any of my videos before you'll see in many cases I use quiver tip rods so uh, they are a bite indicator just like a float is in fact I mean casting out with a float on the float goes under when a fish is uh, taking on the line so bite indication is really important but it's not just floats and quiver tip rods that give you a bite indication so if you've seen a quiver tip rod before you'll know that they have a very very flexible tip and what happens is that the fish, as they pull on the line, so you keep the line taut, they can move that tip. The tip is very sensitive. It's usually made out of fiberglass, very flexible, and hardly offers any resistance whatsoever. So when the fish is pulling on the line, you'll see the tip move. And the fish really doesn't know or doesn't feel much resistance, so it still feels confident taking the bait. If you have a big heavy rod you don't have a sensitive tip. What happens is, I mean, if I take this old school rod here, this is a, even though it's a fiberglass rod and it's quite flexible, it's got a, it's, it's pretty hefty, it's pretty thick. It takes quite a bit of effort for a fish to actually pull that round. So if I'm fishing and the fish are not taking the bait uh, with a lot of earnest, if they are not really hungry and committing suicide by grabbing that bait and swimming away, and they're just pecking at it, uh, sometimes I won't see any movement on this at all because it takes a little bit of weight to pull that round. So often what will happen is the tip will be st steady, it won't be moving at all, and I won't know that anything's happening with that line uh, or with my bait. Uh, the trouble is that when that happens, of course, I can have my rod um, cast in, I can have my bait out there, the fish can take all of the bait. It could be a relatively good fishing day, but I would not because I can't see that there's action on my, my rod, on my line, and on my hook. So um, there's a couple of things that you can do to actually to, to give you an indication of what's happening. So uh, if you haven't got a quiver tip rod, as I say, you can, you can do a few things that will improve your, the indications on your rod. Now the first thing is, if you want to go high end, I mean I have this... Uh, this is a, a bite indicator. It's electronic, it's got battery in it, it's got lights, and it has a bit of a, 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 it makes a bit of a squeal actually when the line is drawn through it. So you have your rod on that, and you have the line relatively slack. Often it's done with free running line, but you can do it just with a little bit of slack line. And what happens is when the fish starts to pull line, the bite indicator tells you what's going on. It either lights up so you can fish through the night and know what's going on. But that's a that's a pretty reasonable setup. I mean, this the rod holder alone on this was about $25, uh, and that was many, many years ago, so that'd be a lot more expensive now. This bite indicator here, um, I, I can't even remember. I've had it for years, and it probably cost me about $30 at the time. You don't have to do that. So what you can do is try a couple of other things. So let's assume that you don't have a quiver tip rod, okay? So you've got your general all-purpose rod and that's fine. Probably the, the simplest thing to do straight off is just use this. Old-time anglers years ago used to have split cane rods. They'd have a very long cane rod, didn't have any flexibility in it, so it wouldn't actually show you what was happening with the fish. What they used to do is they would basically take the line through their finger hold their rod after they've cast out, and that would be their indicator. So what was happening, you could feel a lot of activity happening through your finger. It was a great bite indicator. The challenge is, of course, if you're not getting um, bites, if things aren't happening, it's a long time to have your finger stuck in the air with a piece of line on it. So even though I really used to enjoy this because when the action is on, you're really feeling everything that's going on, and there's probably not much that is uh, more sensitive than this method. But if the fishing is, or if you're not catching many fish, if you're not getting many bites, and you're just sitting around for a long time, like for hours, then that becomes a bit boring and it's a bit hard to just stand there like that. But I know dedicated fishermen who would always do that.
So that would be the first and simplest method of all. Um, if, of course, you, uh, you don't want to stick their finger in air, then there's a couple of other really, really cheap alternatives. And I've just improvised with some of these things. I haven't invented any of these things. They've been around for a long time. So one of the things you could, uh, you could find is a bulldog clip. What you can do is you can use a bulldog clip as a bite indicator like this. So what you do is you give it enough slack line so that it falls down, so it's, the line is not straight. You've got to see what's happening. So the way to do that is have the line with a dip in it like that so that if the, if the fish are pulling, you'll see that moving up and down. And the great thing about it is it does catch your eye. So rather than looking for the tip, which might not be moving as much, because this is so light, a fish just with a little bit of a tip will actually start to make some action there. And all of a sudden you know what's going on. Now, I usually, uh, I don't, I haven't, I have used these in the past, but what I've always done is I tried to color them. Um, I would always make it a bit more distinctive. Black, unfortunately, seems to blend in with a lot of the foliage and that when you're actually fishing near rivers and lakes. So I would usually color that so it was a bit more distinctive. Uh, and that, look, it's very effective, it works very well. The good thing is it's got a little bit of weight on it. So if you were fishing a lake, there's just enough weight there to actually draw the line down, but not create any resistance to the fish. So that works really, really well. They can hardly, they feel a little bit, but they can hardly feel much there. So that is, uh, that is one way and a very simple way of doing it. If you wanted to go really, really cheap, you could do this. What I've done here is, um, if you look at that, that is just the ring from a book binder. You get this plastic spine with many of these rings on it. I've just cut one off and I've used it there. You could actually use that. If you want to go super light, that is probably about the lightest indicator you could use. And of course, you know, I mean, you see it moving up and down. You think this is great. There's something happening there. You know to be alert. Uh, you might just have to strike into a fish. And I don't think any fish is going to feel that at all. It's almost the same as having nothing there at all. Uh, black, as I say, is not a great color, uh, but you can color these. I mean, you can put a bit of paint on it or something like that. Works very, very well. Um, now, if you want to be a bit more ingenious, um, this is something that I've had for quite a long time. It's, well, it's a champagne cork, actually, even though the color's a bit, uh, a bit different. I painted it so that it was distinctive. I made it this very light pink color, which I think was the same color as my niece's bedroom when we painted it. So I used the paint from that. All I did is I then took um, paper clips, the, the large size paper clips, and I just, I took two of them. I cut them, cut the length of them, and I, because it was what I had at the time, and I just bent them into shape. Now, though, there's two coming here together. They're pushing to a tip there, which will hold your line. So you can push your, push your line, I think you can at least, push your line on it, and they're pushed together hard enough so that they hold in place. Now, the other thing that I've done is I've put a bit of a hook at the base there, which is another piece of um, the paper clip. And that, what I usually do is I tie a bit of line to that and tie the other end to my rod holder. So what I can do is I can actually, if I see this moving up and down, the fish, the fish is actually um, moving it because it's playing with the bait, I can actually strike into the fish, and as I do, that will pull it this away. This is secured to the rod holder and just drops to the ground, and I'm free to play the fish. <laughs> it's very simple to make. I've made it out of pieces of uh, spare parts and paper clips and things. Anybody could do that, and it's a really good indicator. And you don't lose it, it just uh, it is secured to your rod holder. Well worth it. And the brighter the color, the better, because that really sort of catches your eye and you can always see what's happening. Um, there's a, One of the things I've seen trout anglers in the US use is one of these small bubble floats. This little plastic float, it's got a bit of a trigger at the base, at the base, um, what you do is you push that up. The idea is with these is that you just you can secure this to your line by lifting it up and linking that onto your line. 
It's usually meant to be near your bait so that it's floating in the water, but you can use that as a bait, a bait, a bite indicator. And that's what I've seen them using as well. So that same idea, you just basically put it on your line, clamps on there. It still can free run, so you can actually reel in and it won't, uh, won't uh, get caught up in your line. But then it will just drop down and when the fish bites, it bobs up and down so you see that some there is some activity. It doesn't weigh much. The only thing I probably don't like about these as much is that um, the hook that secures it is a bit tight. So it doesn't probably run as freely as I'd like it to. So I haven't used these before, but I have seen um, anglers in the US using these when they actually go for trout. So no doubt they do work. And uh, they're very easy to, uh, to attach and they're very, very cheap, so easy to use. Uh, another thing is, everybody would have seen bells and different types of bells. I mean, they come in, in, in different types. I must admit, I like these bells a bit better. I don't like bells at all, actually, but if I had a choice, I usually take the ones with the longer spring. That spring there, there's a little bit more flexibility in it, which makes it ring a bit more easily. The other thing that you've got is uh, these ones here, which is just the same type of idea. They both clip onto the tip of your rod. So the idea is that you're clipping them onto the, the tip of your rod to act as an indicator. Well, they should secure a bit better than that. Anyway, they act as a, an indicator when the fish are hitting your bait. The only trouble is if you've got a stiff rod, okay, and there's not much movement there, sometimes there's no noise at all. So you can be sitting around there just blazing in the sun, not knowing, of course, that something is taking your bait. Uh, and so these are okay if the rod is working, if it's doing its job, when it, um, if the tip is fairly sensitive. If you've got quite a stiff rod, then it's not gonna help you that much. The other thing, I just find them incredibly annoying when you're just doing this and you're moving things around and you're um, playing a fish. So I tend not to have them on my rod at all. What I will do sometimes though, is if I've got two rods going, I'll sometimes put one of those on the rod holder of the rod that I am not fishing most frequently with. So if I go out fishing and I use two rods, one will be a lighter rod where I'll get probably most of the action. The other one will be the bigger rod. I can't watch both really closely at the time. I'll put that, the, the bells, on the rod holder of the other rod. And what that means is there has to get a pretty big hit for those bells to actually go off, but at least it's giving me some indication of what's going on there so I can concentrate on the one rod. So all up, there's many things you can do to actually have an indicator on your rod without going to the expense of buying a quiver tip rod or buying expensive indicators. I must admit the bells are pretty, pretty cheap, but as I say, probably not the best indicator unless the fish are actually taking at the rod quite well. So, if you're not, if you're finding that you're, you're not being able to register bites, if you can't feel what's happening, if you're losing your bait, go out and get an indicator of some sort, whether it be your finger, whether you make it yourself, which is really simple to do, or you, uh, you buy some other type of, say, electronic device, Get something so that you can see what's going on. Uh, if without that, you're pretty much fishing in the dark and who wants to be doing that? So, tight lines.